got Karen Musil as number two. So I just unmuted Karen. So Karen Musil, got there. Yes, Dave, Alex. Talk. Good All morning. Right. Awesome. So you uh, rocked the house on App Count. I love App Count. So tell us about um, those apps and were they a, a bunch of children's apps or were you getting a lot of young people? Kind of what what I had what, week like? um, this week, I did have a um, fair number of younger people that their budgets were smaller, um, but in one of the homes, Mom and Dad, both on Forrester Strong Foundation and uh, Children's Policy for their daughter. Um, in another home, um, there will be a couple bigger apps coming in from this week yet that I just had to finalize a couple things on. Um, but on the board here, I've got the husband's accidental app, and the wife has the main income and has the larger app coming through. Hers will be 1200 more onto my app count here. Um, one of the policies I did was a Mu Term Life Express where I had to go back to the client. Um, we had internet issues when I was trying to do the e-app and get his e-signature on it. So I ended up going back doing the paper app on it. And so a two visit appointment but got his app in finally through the paper app process. Um, also just some other young families doing small forester strong foundations, getting them started on a policy, even if it isn't everything that they'd like it to be as far as covering 100% of the mortgage or all 30 years of the mortgage. It was just about finding what would stay on the books because it fit the budget versus being the bigger dollar value, but then not staying in the budget. Um, one of my best calls from the week was a phone call I got Monday just before the hotspot meeting and it's like okay I don't know this phone number popping in my phone hey Karen I'm not sure if you're still doing insurance but you came out and met with us oh I don't know a year and a half ago or so and we weren't ready then but we're ready now so give us a call <laughs> what well ended up digging back through my not yet box um, which I had just heard on a call recently that it's not not interested, explain. it's not yet. Yes, so those are, uh, explain that in more detail to the new people out there, what the not yet box is. When, client, when someone has filled out this lead and mailed it back in or called in, and then when you talk to them on the phone or when you sit down in the home with them and you're not able to close it, don't just get angry and throw that file away. Hang on to it. This one, after digging through my not yet books box and looking back in my computer file as well, this was a free lead from March 11 of 2013 because the clients did not put a phone number on there. So I had to door knock them in 2013 to make a first contact with them. And I sat down with him at that time. He was on oxygen, and I didn't have anything I could do for him at that time. I had kept a note of it, and I called him last March when we finally were able to write people with oxygen in Minnesota, but didn't get any response from them. And they had my business card under I in their address book. And that's how they tracked back to me to get in touch with me now, because his term policy, they just made the final payment on it. So he had 75000 in place. So I can understand where they didn't want to go down to a ten or a fifteen thousand two years ago. They rolled yeah. out this term, but now they need coverage. And the way it ended up with this couple is I could do guaranteed issue with him and we did write up that application as well. The one that's on the board is for his wife who could qualify level benefit Forrester's plan right. In the local wow. newspaper, the day after I met with them was a Mutual of Omaha ad for guaranteed issue, and he could get his guaranteed issue less expensive there than what I could offer it. I'm not mad at them for making the choice that's a better fit for their family. They're still very happy with me as an agent, 
and happy that I'm saying you should get the best deal you can get on that because it's the same product. It's graded benefit for two years and then it's his best benefit. If I can't find them the best deal, I don't want them to go with me just because it's me if it's a significant price difference. But they are very happy with the Forester's benefits on her plan and I know I'm building, I've built the relationship with them that can wow. lead to more business there. That's awesome. That is awesome. I, <laughs> I love your not yet pile. <laughs> pretty cool. That's Steve helped cool. me with finding this one, and he's like, all 400 of these pages? <laughs> and I said, I think there's only 389 in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, that is good stuff. Wow. Awesome. Yes. Well, good job. Good job on that. I love it. Love it. Okay. Um, So Mr. Spencer showed up. So let's talk to Deshaun. Deshaun, hey, man, I just unmuted you. How you doing, dude? Good morning, Alex. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Good, good. You've been kind of on a roll, dude. So um, you're number one on the leaderboard. Excited, excited. We had a a light week, but even on a heavier week of production, you still would probably be close to being number one anyway. Eight applications, $4,972.80. So, dude, talk about your week, man. I knew you were jacked up when we were talking. Yeah, yeah, I had um, started um, making dials, and um, that's the key. Just started contacting everybody. I went back and kind of reset myself, and I did my – my builders list, I created a list of contacts that I know, personal contacts and people that I used to work with. I used our, you know, I went to the resources, resources tab in NA University and printed it out and, and just jotted down everyone I knew. So uh, a couple of them were referrals. I also had bought some leads, um, spent uh, 50 bucks I made maybe, and, <laughs> and then um, called the leads and actually wrote a couple of policies from the leads. I didn't buy a leads, I bought uh, three A three A leads, rework leads, and those are gold. So I, you know, and, and people were answering, um, calling. I started uh, adopting the time of calling from 7:30 a.m. to 10:30 a.m. And by that time, I mean every it seems just like everyone's attitude is a lot different. Um, so it just, I mean, they're going to work, but they're in better spirit, I think, and versus waiting to the end of the day when they're exhausted and already beat up. So that just making that tweak and that adjustment has made my production just a man all go through the roof. My confidence is up higher now that I'm actually getting to talk to more people and sit in front of people. So that has made a a, a tremendous change. And then the number one thing I feel is just constantly being in contact with you and talking to you about what I was experiencing and what challenges I was going through, which that, that helped a lot on getting through. So that, that, yeah. Everyone's thinking that I'm paying you to say that. Oh, no, no, it's true story, true story. Absolutely true. You mean you're not an actor? I'm not, not a paid actor. actor. No. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you're not Alex Trebek selling right. uh, life insurance on TV. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I learned a lot. It's also getting my, my product knowledge up by just going through the, the different uh, you know, uh, different people that I'm meeting, they're different, um, you know, health issues and stuff. So I'm starting to learn more about which company can uh, uh, do what for each person. So it, 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 it's, it's been a journey, but I'm now got out of my own way, and now I'm, it's starting to show. And I'm loving life right now. <laughs> I'm also sitting here with my with members of my team, with Sharito and Arlinda and Conrad, and we're, we're right here on the conference call. They're, they're, we're going over some product stuff. We've been going at this since 9 this morning, so we, 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 we're fired up. We, <laughs> <laughs> well, I could tell, man. And um, <clears throat> So let's kind of back up. You said some things, like, really fast. I wanted to slow down a little bit. Uh, so a, a $50, because if you bought three A leads, that would have been, like, 80 bucks or 90 mm-hmm. bucks. But the $50, those were, what kind of leads were those on the $50? Um, 2A, 2A, 3A leads. They're about 472 a piece. Something like that. Oh, how many? 378. I bought about 12, I think. I think 12 about 12. AAA leads. 
Yeah, triple A leagues was like I think those were three seventy two. You said how old they were or how much? No, no, no. I'm just saying you you bought twelve triple A leagues, so you weren't. And then RWs, the balance were RWs. Right, it was a mix of both. Of them. Yeah. Okay. And what area of the country are you working? In Maryland. I'm in, uh, in Prince George County, Maryland, in Maryland. All right. And so you were booking appointments on these older leads. So the older leads were? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And and some some of the people, you know, when I call and they, oh, I don't remember that. And then I just do this. Do this I've, been, I've been shown just start describing them because their information is on the paper. And then you're six foot, two, you remember putting that down? And then, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they, they, they remember. And I have the document with me to show you your signature when I arrive. And, and that's what I do. And, and then they open right up. Once I remind them that they find it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was awesome, bro. And I, and I understand uh, that you had texted some, for any kind of help on underwriting. In fact, I got a text from Patrick Connor. You actually texted Patrick for some help on underwriting. Yes, I had um I had a client that had a I never had been asked about a child with Down syndrome, so I I, I didn't even really know to ask that question. But um, a client had a customer had a, a young daughter, and she was one years old, and she had Down syndrome. She was diagnosed with Down syndrome since birth, and I was unsure on who to go to, and I started looking through all the information and everyone. It was a decline, and it's on the children's policy that's one of the questions that they ask if the child has Down syndrome. And so I called you, I texted you, it was bright and early in the morning, I text you, text Patrick Connor and Jane Ben, and all three of you guys responded back with the same answer. It was just amazing. I was just impressed that such higher-ups were responding to me at such an early time in the morning. And, it, and, and you know, and then Jane and Patrick and you, you, you guys gave me much more information than I even asked, the question I even asked. So it was it was great, uh, and I, okay, yeah, I so, thank you guys for that. So this, yeah. So this is kind of a unique situation that everyone needs to learn in terms of, you know, you think I can't cover a child with a policy who has Down syndrome, but talk to them about the solution to cover that child, Deshaun. The Trans America will insure her as a child on one of the parents' um, policies as a writer. So she's able to get coverage for her because there's no medical questions for her at that age, uh, as a rider, um, and she's able to keep that policy for up to two years. The maximum is $5,000 in coverage, but after two years, we'll be able to go back in and write a whole life policy on that child. So she was able to have coverage immediately, you know, with Transamerica for $5,000 on her when everyone else in the country was denying her, including Gerber, because they tried with Gerber. Gerber, <laughs> man, that's a great baby food company. <laughs> they're experts in feeding babies. I don't know if they're experts in underwriting babies, but no. bro, see, because you checked up line and cross line and sideline, you know, Jane Bean too helped you out. So, and now tell me, how how did you meet Jane Bean? It was it just you heard her name on a conference call, or? When you texted her, you obviously had her phone number. Does she know yeah. you? Um, she, so one she, of our top producers in the country yeah, knows you. I know, right? It's crazy. I went to a conference last year. I went to a conference in North Carolina, and I met her there. I spoke with her. I had an opportunity to sit next to her, and I started talking to her, and I asked her for her phone number. Do you mind if I reach out to you? She said, no problem. Great. And I've seen her in a couple of hot spots here in, in Maryland, but um, never really got to really sit down with her other than at the conference. And um, once I explained, yeah, I met you at the conference, just refreshed her memory. She, oh, yeah, yeah, great, I remember you. And, and it was just like we, we'd known each other forever. And she was just giving me advice and tips and, and encouragement. And, yeah, it was, it was just amazing. Just going to the hot spots and the conference, that's where I met everyone. Um, Patrick Connor, I got his number because I, I, I always attend all of your conference calls. When he's filled in for you, he drops his number. And I jotted it down, and I kept it at hand. I programmed it in my phone, and it was a great help. I'm glad I was on the conference call. <laughs> okay, so, Deshaun, how long have you been with us? Um, in, uh, July will be, um, will be two years. Two years. And you've been kind of up and down as far as production. But in the two years, did you um, – do you think that the – 
attending hotspots and going to the conferences conferences helped you? Yes, absolutely. That's the reason why I stayed in so long. That's the reason why I was able to hang around, even though I wasn't producing, um, you know, and I was able to hang around because I was, every time I leave the hotspot, I just feel like I know more. I'm excited because, and then it's just the people at the hotspot that just, you know, just sometimes you like go to work and you, it just because of the people there, you like the atmosphere and, you know, the people that make you laugh and just, it just, the camaraderie, it just, it's just different to me at the hotspots for NAA and, and the training that we have to support because everybody's all, always so helpful. And, and that's the, to me, staying connected, staying connected to the company, staying in there with the guys in the trenches and asking questions and listening, that's what helped me stay in so long. And now that I finally got out of my own way and not stop being afraid of the phone, um, I'm, 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 and I listen to you, and you, you, you've been on me telling me to just get on the phone and pound the phone, and the 55 haystack has been a great mind changer, and, and now I'm just out of my own way. It's just, it's just great, and I just stayed around the hot spot. So the hot spot is very, very important because you get around the ones that's making the money, the ones that are successful, that's been in business for years, and you get different perspectives from each person. And every week is different. I learn something from someone else every week. And that's, what, that's why I'm still here. Although my wife said, hey, you better, might want to start looking at something else. I, I know. I know this is it. And I was right. And, and, and she loves me now for it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I hope she loves you more for, loves you for other reasons besides that. Right. But I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take yeah. that yeah. any day of the yeah, week. Yeah, I'm loving it. And also, I, I brought my son to the hot spot. He's 17. He'll be 18 in February. Um, so I brought him to the hot spot. I've been having him. Um, he's now on Chapter 6 of the Eight Steps to Success. Um, he's reading that. Um, comes to me after he, you know, as he does his homework and read it. He um, had him uh, watch the, um, you know, the, the TAWC yesterday. So he's excited. I took him to the hot spot. He met everyone. And Matt Mason, you know, everyone talked to him. He was just so pumped up when we left. He just could not stop talking. In the car, it was just, I was excited for him because he, he got it. He actually saw what I was been trying to tell him, but he heard it from someone other than myself, and now he is just on it. He is just on it. It's just awesome. I love it. It just changed his mindset on everything. And then the book, he just so pumped up. <laughs> and, and everyone was real nice and informative, answering his questions. We sat up front. And he paid attention, and I'm just excited for him because now he, he has something that he, he's a, in the firefighter cadet program. So Jay Turner was a great, you know, him and Steve, you know, I, I say look at these guys, and, you know, they're making it on a part-time basis, but they're, they're fired up, and, they, they, you know, he was just excited. It just was an awesome time, and I'm just blessed that I'm able to pass it down to my, my children. And, and it's, it's just a family thing to me. I must love this company because of the family, the values that we have. That's what it's about. I love it. Oh, my gosh. You said a mouthful. I mean, I can't even amplify that any more than you did. That rocks. Um, I, you know, because our guest today is um, uh, Hector is 19. Your son has an opportunity to be like Hector. Yes. He's 17. He's only two years younger than Hector. When does your son turn 18? In February. He just okay. got nine more months ago. Yeah. So he's got he's two years behind Hector and Hector's kicking butt and um mm. I mean that I don't know what to say. I mean like uh, he instead of playing Halo video games or Madden video yeah. games, he brought your son to get around winners that he can look up to, people that can inspire him to be better than who he is, you know, not killing aliens on a video. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, um, um, dude, I, I'm fired up for you. I'm so fired up for you. And Thank you're you. doing the Haystack Challenge, which is just dialing the phone. You kind of tricked your mind, right, into dialing yeah. the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It took well, the fear out of it. It took the fear out of it. It took the fear out of it. So for the brand new people on the phone, Deshaun, talk about what is the Haystack Challenge? What does that mean? The Haystack Challenge is 55 haystacks. Every call is a tick mark in your haystack. So when you get five tick marks, it becomes one haystack. 
and we're the goal is to get 55 haystacks, and that gives you about I believe 279 calls, something like that. 275. 75 calls, yeah. 75 dials. Yeah. So, and that that has it, it's sort of I don't say making a game of it, but it kind of like challenge me and then you know it's when you made the statement of don't finish a haystack and don't stop until you finish complete the haystack so instead of me stopping at three tick marks i finish at five that may complete the haystack and that just it just made the difference that last call can be the one you know so it just it just made me think that way and then it, i just all about the haystack challenge it's all about the haystack about the haystack about the haystack hey um and it's, it's almost like booking an appointment is almost secondary to filling out the haystack challenge. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to, to book appointments as a result of filling out the haystacks. So the objective is, is doing the tick marks and crossing the haystack. The objective is not booking an appointment. What happens is you end up booking an appointment as right. a byproduct of ticking the haystacks and doing the haystacks. So it's like, Black, well, that's really weird. How Your objective is not to book appointments? No, because if your objective is to book the appointments, you have all this pressure on you, and then right. all of a sudden you freeze and you freak out. And it's like, man, i got to get through this haystack. i got to get through this haystack. All of a sudden, somebody has this on. Oh, okay, Joe, this is Deshaun. I'm with the Mortgage Protection Department, and you sent in this form. I just need to verify the information. You're trying to get through it, book the appointment, and then, okay, I gotta, okay now I've got I to tick some more because I've got to get through my 55 day stacks. Yeah. It's weird. I know, but it's like the book Go For No. The objective is not to go for yes. The objective is go for no. Have as many no's as you can get. And... Through getting the no's, you get the yeses. I mean, you know, this is a truism in sales, but we kind of fool you guys into ticking the haystacks, and it works for me. Yeah, works <laughs> and it's me working too. for you, dude. Okay. Yeah, you too, baby. You too, man. <laughs> oh, man, I'll I tell you what. I am like, uh, I just, you impressed me. You totally impressed me. I'm so fired up for you. I always knew you had it inside you. I just didn't know when you would realize it. And I think you're realizing it now after two years. And, okay, so let me ask you, is it worth hanging in there two years to get to where you are today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. if you quit, then you wouldn't have an opportunity to, to share this with your son. And right. you wouldn't have maybe an opportunity to have a positive influence in his life beyond just you, but to have other people that can influence him, yeah. have an environment that can influence him. Absolutely. Well, dude, I'm fired up for you. You rock, man. So Thank proud you. of you. Yeah. All right, man. You. Okay, so we're going to um, transition. You know, um, that's really a good segue. When Deshaun's talking about his uh, um, his son and getting his son fired up with this thing, and we look at the opportunity that we have to bring people on board our business team, you just never know who's going to do it. And I think it's just, you know, the only way to make this business work is to, number one, um, de determine or make the decision, the quality decision that you're not going to quit, but you're going to do it until it works, no matter how long it takes, right? And um, it may take you sooner. It may take you later. It may take you four weeks, six weeks, or it could take you two years. I don't care. What eventually happens is you figure it out. You get it done. Things change in your life, uh, but you get to do the things that you're supposed to do to make it work, and all of a sudden it, it works. Like it maybe took Deshaun almost two years to then finally to implement what we knew that he could have done from day one. But he's doing it now, and look what's happening. Okay, our guest Hector, Hector the Protector, got on board with us, and I'm going to bring him on. And I'm just fired up, Hector. I just unmuted you. And Hector, you uh, there? Yes, yes, I am, Alex. Good to be awesome. here. Yeah, so let's put your picture up on here. Dude, let me get your picture <laughs> up on this conference call. We want people to see your handsome handsome face. <laughs> and, um, and, dude, you rock, man. So, anyways, this is Hector Protector. We are proud of Hector. He is, he is the man, myth, the legend. And um, 
So, Hector, when did you sign up? Uh, and who's, well, t- introduce yourself. Whose team are you on, et cetera? And where do you live? Uh, so, my name is Hector uh, Cabildo. Uh, I live in El Paso. That's my host, hotspot. And I was hired by Justin Karsnitz, direct to Michael Ovintovich. Awesome. And um, so, you're out there in El Paso, Texas. And um, how did you end up finding us? So one day I just decided that I, I needed to start applying for jobs and I wanted to do something uh, related to finances because that's something what I'm learning in school. So I was going through Craigslist and I found a couple of ads talking about uh, life insurance and financial products. So I decided to send in my information and I got a response and I started talking to Justin Carson over the phone and he got me enrolled in class. and. And I just started going to the hot spots, and well, eventually I started to to like it, and I just decided to stay in it. How long? Okay, so how long did it take you to get through uh, the license coach process? So it took me uh, two days, and on the third day I took the test, and well, I, I unfortunately I passed it on the first try. <laughs> okay, let me just so I. Just so I, I, I heard you correctly, you didn't say it took you 21 days or 210 days or two months. You said how many days to get through? <laughs> just, just two days, and on the third day, I just kind of uh, finished through it and took the exam. <sighs> what? <laughs> how long did it take you to study in those two days? How many hours do you think you put in? Uh, probably a lot. So the thing I did was I, I just woke up, I had some breakfast, and I sat down on the computer all day and had dinner and went to sleep <laughs> and repeated the process again the next day. So you must have wanted to get your license badly. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the course was very tedious, and uh, um, being able to finish through it very quickly was like took a, away a lot of stress. So I just wanted to get through it very quickly. <laughs> and so you got your license. And then uh, tell, tell us what happened after you got your license. You started going to the hotspot meetings right away? Uh, so uh, before I even started licensing, I, I, I was going to the hotspots. And uh, so I, I put in the process a week prior to national convention. So I decided to go to that too. And honestly, it was such a great decision. I got to meet so many people and got to meet more about the company, which was very awesome. And so that, that really motivated okay. me. And put me dude, dude, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're, nine, you're 19. And then someone says, Hector, you need to come. Yeah, you're not even licensed yet. And they say, Hector, you need to come to the national conference. Who, who actually sold you on coming to the national conference, putting money, like, I mean, that was a cheap coming out from El Paso, Texas. Did you drive? Did you fly? How did you get there? So, uh, I don't know if you know David Bialda. He's also uh, here in El Paso. Him and I drove over to, to Phoenix. And for Phoenix, we, we got the plane over to, to rally. So, but, I mean, it wasn't really sold to me. I, I mean, I really liked the opportunity. I saw it's something that I could do. And so just in Carson, it's my upline. And they would be all what told me about it. And it was something that I wanted to do. And that way I could get to know the company more and have more uh, my knowledge about what it is that I'm going to be doing. Oh, man. So what, was there any one speaker that kind of lit your fire? Anybody you talked to that just like solidified it in your brain that this was the thing that you should be doing with your life? Well, there there were a lot of them, and, and you're included. Uh, all the speakers who were talking in the front, uh, giving us inspiration on, on how to do things and the way the system works. I mean, Andy was also a great uh, presenter. I really liked the way he motivated people. And Tim Goad, also awesome presenter. Uh, he really was very motivational, very uh, pushing. So, I mean, th- there were a lot of people that really caught my attention, and I mean, that, that was really awesome, being able to wow. be a part of that. Yeah, and it was probably something, have you ever seen anything like that before in your life? 
Honestly, uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. and, and I worked in insurance in the past and just like, uh, like State Farm or all states, just making phone calls. And I had gone to so, some seminars, but I mean, none of them ha- have ever compared to, to what I saw in a national conference. Wow. So you had, you'd only really been signed up with us for, what, a week or two, and then you decided to come to the conference? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you come back from the conference, the, the, the wheels hit the runway. Like, did you start tearing it up? Did you, like, start doing five, ten thousand 10000 a week in production? What, what happened after you got back? Oh, no. After I got back, the, the first day that I got back, I, actually, I, I received my license from the state. So that next week I started uh, making calls and I had a quite a good number of appointments. I had like eight to five and, and so I sat down with them, but all of them were terrible. I mean, none of them believed in, in me. I, mean, I, was, I was just a wreck and, and that went on for a couple of weeks. So a couple of weeks, like how, many appointments, uh-huh. how many appointments did you go on again? Say it again. How many did you book and, and did you close any of them? So, like, in the first four or five weeks, I, I probably booked around 15 to 20 appointments, all of which were terrible. Uh, I wasn't able to to write in any of those appointments. Wow. And so what, why didn't you quit? Why didn't you say, this sucks, this is not for me? What, what made you continue? Well, how many times uh, I did consider it, not, not too much, because I mean, I, I really want to strive to do it. So I don't know. I think that in a way, uh, I was very determined to make this work either one way or another. Because I thought that it worked for others. So I mean, if if, if it wasn't working for me, maybe it was because I I hadn't put in the good work yet, or I hadn't tried it enough time. So and being able to to have relations with. David Bialba, who, who lives here in El Paso, very good friend of mine that also works with the Alliance, and with Mike and with Justin, really uh, pushing me forward. So if, if, I, if I was going to leave, I was also going to disappoint a lot of friends of mine. Wow, so the, the relationships is really kind of what kept you believing. You know, Dee, what you said was what a winner says. A winner says, look, if other people can do it, you know, then I'm just going to hang in there because it's not the, the the fault is not the leads, the fault is not the system, the fault is not nowhere else except the man in the mirror. I got to figure out the man in the mirror. I got to figure out what I'm doing wrong to make it work. Because if other people are doing it, then I know I can do it too, dude. You said like all the books we read, you can like summarize really almost all the books we read with that attitude of a winner, which is you accept full responsibility, but knowing that, you know that you can control your destiny. Dude, mm-hmm. that rocks, man. So what, so what was the specific advice from any of your mentors that helped you kind of get on the road and on track to start closing sales? Like, do you remember your first sale that you closed? Uh, yes, I did. And it actually came after I sold uh, a policy to my mom. So, I mean, being able to sell your first one really took off a lot of the stress, a lot of the oh, hold anxiety. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You actually sold the policy to family? Yes. Wow. You must love your mother. <laughs> yes, and, and my house. <laughs> wow, dude, that rocks. And so why did that give you confidence? Because, I mean, I, I had a lot of stress on... on selling the first one. And I, I didn't want to sell my first one to my family because I wanted to show myself that I was capable of doing it. But at, at that point, I, was, I just didn't care anymore. And my mom really needed something, so I wanted to help her out. So I sold that first one to her. And after that, I mean, the next day, actually, I, I sold my next two. So I mean, that, in a way, really helped me release stress and anxiety of selling the first one. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. So you actually, by going through the process of um, helping someone with life insurance, whether it's family, friends, or whatever, it kind of got your mind right on what, that it's not a big deal, is it? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it really took away a lot of the pressure that I had on, on selling my first one. So even though it was my family, it really helped out a lot. That's awesome. So that confidence alone helped you close your next two deals. What else um, has helped you kind of get better and better? What other things? So definitely hearing your recordings. So uh, I've been listening to Eric Belair's uh, ATM and home presentation for a while. And I mean, I've heard that recording like 20 times already. I, I always find myself finishing off his sentences because I mean, I already know what he's going to say. But I keep listening to it because if I can really remember what the guys in the, that, the, that are in the alliance are making good things, remember what they're doing and what they're saying, I and mean, that really helps me out when, when I'm working. So I really like doing those kinds of things. Oh, man. So you, you're immersing yourself in the training. You're, you're plugging into hotspot meetings. Um, did you talk to Mike and Justin a lot on helping you get coached on how to, you know, get better in the home? Oh, yes, definitely. So, I mean, I, I would always call them uh, after I left the home, give them feedback on what was going on, what what, they, what their responses were. And they would always help me out, like guide me on maybe where things went wrong. So getting a lot of feedback from my opponent and from Mike really um, made a difference also. So... That was really helpful. So, so calling upline after every appointment to get some immediate coaching really helped you. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So you spent the whole month of February not closing anything. Then March, yes. you started you started getting on a roll. Yes. So it was mid-March when, when I sold the, my, my mother's policy and then the other two that I sold the next day. So after that, I mean, I got a couple of more sales, uh, not too many because I mean, I'm still in school. I don't have too much time to work, but I mean, when, whenever I do have time, I, I'm making calls or setting appointments. So I, I have had a couple of more sales after those. Wow, that's awesome. So you're still in school. Yes, I'm still in school. <laughs> you're a full-time you're, you're full student. What school do you go to? Uh, I go to New Mexico State University. Wow. Yes. New Mexico State. <laughs> and um, you're full-time, enrolled full-time. What are you studying? I'm currently studying economics and finance. So <laughs> I'm directing more <laughs> into, into business. Oh, my gosh. And so... So you're on a roll. You're you're. Are you consistently doing appointments every week and and kind of fitting it in when you can? Ah uh, yes. I mean, some weeks like uh, actually like this one are, are much tougher because the school semester is ending. Uh, have a bit more of projects as so you have exams going on. So I mean, some some weeks are tougher and some weeks are much uh, like better to, to work, but whenever I have the chance, I really uh, like being able to put in time to get some appointments and, and some uh, and writing some business. <laughs> you know, um, I know Mike remembers, uh, we had a guy named Justin. Um, uh, he went to University of Kentucky. He was a double major. He actually graduated uh, magna cum laude, a double major, and I think it was economics and um, and another, the reason why, because I was an economics major, got my master's in economics, so that's why I think you're awesome. But uh, beyond that, Justin, and at UK, he was like, I think Mike, he was making like, what, 60, he was making about 60 grand a year part-time, as well as being a double major at UK, and he would just do exactly what you're doing, just working part-time, and his buddies that were working like work-study programs were making like, what, eight bucks an hour or something. And um, he, was, he was making like five grand a month or something, and, uh, which is just like insanity, but um, just working around what they're already doing. So, dude, I, man, you fire me up. You, uh, I think the perseverance and the decision you made to just do this was the thing that, um, the thing that helped you. I mean, and then the system. So, um, man, 
Tell you what, so what would you have to say to someone out there who's like getting started, they're struggling, they can't seem to book appointments, and if they book appointments, they go on the appointments, and, you know, what would you say to those people? I mean, I would just say that, that the system works. It's a great system. If you're following through what other people are doing while making calls, and, well, the people who are successful in doing so, and the people who are successful in the in-home presentation, if you're really um, paying attention to what they're doing and sort of reflecting the same things on your own, then you, you'll, you'll be able to learn things much faster than by doing trial and error. So, and, and perseverance is very important, like you said. So, I mean, uh, there's many times where you would like to give up, but if you keep on going, eventually you will learn from your mistakes. Eventually you will get better. So there, there will be a certain point when you will start being successful. So the thing is to never lose faith in yourself, to always keep your head up and, I mean, always keep on walking even though the, the road might get tough at some points. Yeah. So on a part-time basis, like how much do you think, how much premium do you think you've written so far um, since you've been really working the last, like, four weeks part-time? So uh, I've written, like, let's say, like, probably around uh, 5000 in premium so far. And I wrote an annuity for 130000 uh premium. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So part-time, after going through really a month and a half from February to mid-March of just, you know, not doing like closing anything, then you take care of your mom mid-March. And then from mid-March to now on a part-time basis, you've written a 5000 but you also found an annuity. So, um, okay, so like I have people that have never found an annuity. They've been with me for years. What, how did you go, how did you find that annuity? So I found the money in, in the IRA by oh, essentially asking the questions from the ATM. So, on the page of your financial picture, there's some questions on, on the IRA, 401ks, and there's also another page of safe money at the very end that talks about that again. So I found that at the very beginning, and I just like put that information on the side for, for the moment while I wrote the, the policy. So I wrote the policy, and at the very end, I went back to it. Uh, I spoke to the woman. She was she's in her 60s. And I reminded her, uh, I mean, about the crashes uh, in the 80s and 2000 and 2008. And, well, obviously she remembered them. And she did lose lots of money in the past. So, I mean, I just talked to her about a program that will help her keep the value of her money and guarantee her life, lifetime income. So, I mean, it, it was pretty easy after that because and she knew at the point that it was something that she definitely wanted to, to do. So... I just left the book, The Growth Without Risk, and I banned found her for later appointments. And after two other appointments after that one, I was able to finally uh, finish all the paperwork for that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you're going to make about nine, nine to $10,000 in commission on that $130,000 annuity. And... Um, and so within, so this is what, April 23rd. So you went from about 15th of March to April 23rd. You probably have made over 10000 made $11,000 based on what you've written so far. Not a bad deal for a part-time university student that's 19 years old, I would say. What do you think about that, Hector? I don't know. It's, it's just great to be able to be helping other people out and all. I mean, the, the money is great and all, but... In essence, being able to, to work with others and, and learning so much on how to sell, how, how to work with others, it's, I think it's really more rewarding than, than just the money. Absolutely. Well, dude, you're, you definitely honor us by being on the conference call and sharing your experience. And, uh, you know, with um, um, here it's probably, well, I think the challenge sometimes for um, folks is that they've had, especially folks that are older than you. <laughs> it's like a 20-year-old's older than you, right? But, um, you know, if you've got someone who's, 
you know, 35, 45, 55 years old, they have all those years of experience under their belt. And so what they do is when they get started with us, they always have to balance everything they're experiencing with their past. It's almost like sometimes your past is a detriment because you look to the classes of your past and then you measure how successful you are based on that. And when some of these folks overdo that part, it causes them to quit. It causes them to rethink what they're doing. It doesn't cause them to do what you did at the young age of 19 to just have a fresh attitude that this is brand new. I'm going to come at this like I don't know nothing, and I'm just going to do what they tell me. And if it's working for other people, I know it can work for me if I just do what they're doing. So obviously, I'm not doing what they're doing, so how do I do what they're doing? So you went to the national conference, you amped up your belief, which I think was a fuel to get you through February and the beginning of March. And that belief in plugging the hot spots, talking to your upline all the time, and, and using the system the way that Andy has laid out, because look, the system is what has made all that available to you, and then all the people that have committed to help you, and then you believing. So you have belief in the system, belief in your upline to help you, belief in the alliance, and then belief in Andy Albright, who's charting the course. And then finally, dude, you finally believed in yourself long enough to let the results work. And I commend you. I commend you because I think there's a lot that a 55-year-old or 45-year-old can learn from you um, at your age of 19 years old. So, man, I, I appreciate you being on the call. You rock, bro. And, uh, man, uh, I think this was like one of the, the shot in the arm that maybe some people needed out there. So, Hector the Protector, you are the man. <laughs> and uh, so we expect great things out of you. And, uh, you know, I expect you to get straight A's this, this semester, too, because if you're going to be good, you're going to be good at everything. It's like, you know, you can't expect excellence in only one area of your life. If you are a winner, you're going to expect excellence in all areas of your life. Hey, but, you know, if you can run a few more appointments and maybe not study as hard for history, then I'm okay with that, too, because uh, history <laughs> won't make you a million dollars a year, but this business will. So, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you, Hector. Keep rocking, man. And, you know, obviously anything I can do for you, now that you have my number, you can't get a hold of Justin or Levintovich. Uh, you can always have me to call, and, I'll, and Patrick, too. Patrick will, Patrick will answer anybody, too. So, uh, anyway, bro, we're proud of you, man. And uh, hey. keep rocking. Thanks, everybody, for plugging in the call, and we're going to make this available to you on MP3. Any last words? My man. Uh, just perseverance, honestly. Hard work, yeah. I believe, will always be talent. So if you're determined and, and you're willing to print the hard work, this system is honestly a great tool to help you achieve whatever dreams you have. So just keep working. That's awesome, bro. Well, thanks, man. Thanks, everybody, for plugging in. Um, God bless you, man. Take care. Hey, Take care, buddy. Thanks a lot for having me here, Alex. Have a good day. No problem. Okay, take care.